If you have an unquenchable thirst to crush your bucket list, relentlessly pursue your dreams, and live life on your own terms, then turn up the volume and tune in. You're now listening to Zeph and Moses Blacksburg on the Year of Purpose podcast. Zeph and Blacksburg here with another round of the Year of Purpose podcast, and today I'm joined by Jason Zook. Now, Jason is formerly Jason's surfer app, and JasonHeadset.com and Jason Sadler is an unconventional marketer and entrepreneur. He created I Wear Your Shirt, a company that used sponsored t-shirts to promote businesses on social media, and in 2012 and 13, he auctioned off his last name to the highest bidders. Jason recently wrote a book about his entrepreneurial journey, but in a very unique way. Frustrated by the confusing landscape of book publishers and book agents, Jason self-published and raised over $75,000 through sponsorships in his book, Creativity for Sale, before a single word was written or a single copy of the book was sold. Tired of living a life that felt prescribed to him by society, Jason used his out-of-the-box thinking and ingenuity to create multiple profitable internet-based businesses. And he is a public speaker and entrepreneur at heart and lives a life of intention and continues to strive to make a living doing what he loves and today he's hanging out with me what's going on jason z how's it going good to uh good to hear your own bio read by somebody else because then you're like oh i have done all of those things that oh okay cool you tend to forget all those but thank you very much i appreciate it yeah man no problem thanks for being here and you have a heck of a story because it, I was telling you, you know, before we jumped on the call, I actually heard of what you did with the t-shirts way back when, because I remember reading this article of, you know, this guy is going to wear a new t-shirt every single day of the week for a year with your logo on it. And so you have some unconventional businesses, but you've really found a way to, I think, have fun and escape, you know, the whole nine to five thing that everybody thinks they have to do. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if any of your listeners can relate to this or you as well, but I just, I always had this feeling growing up that I was different. I had this feeling that like something about me was was unique or that I had more to offer the world than just going to a job and sitting at a in a chair at a desk and working eight hours a day and then going home and like that was it. That was my existence. And so as I left the nine to five world, I, I just... You know, I, I think I gave my brain the permission to be like, okay, let's get weird. You know, let's just do some stuff that's different. Let's be okay with not, you know, fitting into the this the status quo of society. And so when I wear your shirt, kind of came into my brain. It was just a very kind of. Uh, you know, culmination of all these different things that I thought would be interesting. And and at the forefront of that, it was really just telling stories. You know, I've been a storyteller ever since I was a little kid, always trying to entertain my family and having fun and kind of being the jokester. And so with I Wear Your Shirt, every single day, I basically got to tell a different company story in my own way, being unique and trying to just bring some kind of humanistic nature to advertising, which didn't really exist. And still, you know, in my mind, social media has just now become, you know, hey, here's our discount codes, here's our story, you know, like they're just putting all their stuff out there in a normal way. It's you very rarely do you find these awesome wins. So, you know, I just think that there was something that was missing there. And for five years, I tried to capture that and made over a million bucks wearing t-shirts, which is ridiculous. Uh, and just, you know, have had a lot of different other projects kind of come along the way. And one of the things that I noticed about what you did with that is you, you kind of took an existing problem, which is, you know, people are looking for clients and customers, but, you know, the, the typical marketing methods don't exactly work anymore, or at least not nearly as well as, you know, as, as they used to. And you turned it into, hey, like, I'm going to just wear your logo on a T-shirt and, and make a business out of it. So I really like that you took something that most people look at and say, oh, well, like, I would never pay for that or I would never do that. And you just went along with it. And it sounds like it totally worked, you know, both monetarily and it allowed you to create, you know, the freedom that you've been looking for. Yeah, it was kind of the first thing for me that said, I can ask somebody for something absolutely ridiculous and they can either say yes or no, but when they say yes, it's empowering. And then every yes thereafter becomes even more empowering. And for me, that's that's how these crazy projects happen is that the more that people give me the permission to do that by giving me money for these things or saying yes or, or agreeing to contracts or whatever, every step along that that path is like, oh, okay, well, let's get crazier. Let's do more things that are interesting. And, and you know, I was a nobody from Jacksonville, Florida. I still feel like a nobody, you know, now living in San Diego, but that wanted to p get companies around the world to pay him to wear a t-shirt. I mean, that's a little bit 
audacious but i just was like why not you know why does it have to be some celebrity why does it have to be somebody with a lot of followers or whatever why can't it just be a normal person who is willing to put themselves out there and i think a lot of people get stuck you know they think uh, i have to have a big following i have to do all these things no you don't you just have to have the courage and you have to have the work ethic and you have to be willing to hear a bunch of people tell you no uh when you're getting started and i just was able to kind of push through all that stuff and say all right let's just keep going and that's that that's kind of what continues to drive me through all my ideas is just I want those things more than I'm afraid to do them and then that's the lens that like I apply to everything that I'm doing and I think that's a great way to look to look at it is is your desire to make it happen has to be greater than what you're afraid of um and, and so that got built of it I think you had multiple people in the end you know wearing shirts for other companies as well right yeah we got up to eight people at one point and we were in 2011 represented 1,825 companies in one year. So it was a lot of companies, a hell of a lot of t-shirts, and it was just, uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, we were, we were kind of talking before we were recording about just the traveling and, and going and talking to different people. I mean, one day I would wear a shirt for a Fortune 500 company, really even a Fortune 10 company, and the next day I would wear a company for a dog poop bag that was like <laughs> biodegradable. You know, like talk about like such a weird, different, like experiencing all these unique things, but that I loved. I mean, for me, if it was a, you know, Fortune 500 company every day. I mean, that, it would get boring. It would get old. As opposed to the just the the wildly different stories and the people that were behind those companies. Uh, yeah, it was really unique. It was really fun. So I have to ask: after making like 1,800 t-shirts, do you not have to buy clothes like ever again, or now do you have to like you know make pairs of jeans with like people's <laughs> logos all over them? Yeah. So the the whole my whole closet has gone through its own evolution uh, the past couple of years. You know, the first year that I did it, it was 365 days just me so that was basically how many shirts I got and every once in a while and so I took care of the printing the first year I was like I'm gonna I'll, I'll manage this or no sorry first year I said you guys send me the shirts that was a disaster like it was just people sent the wrong sizes people just you know they, they thought it'd be funny to send me a small and I'm like I, I'm a big dude I'm six foot five like <laughs> it, put, a, put me in a small I'm gonna make your company look silly uh, so the second year I took it over so I was the one like coordinating t-shirt printing had a t-shirt printer all that stuff but then people were still sending me shirts so somehow I ended up the second year with like 700 shirts I had like <laughs> double the shirts that I could wear and so the third year, you know, obviously everybody was getting shirts who was working for me. You know, they were all getting, so I was still getting the same 365. But it was about that time when like over a thousand shirts is way too many shirts. I mean, that is like more than a closet full of shirts. And so I started donating them. I started finding causes where people could reuse them and they wouldn't just end up on a for sale rack. It was that people would kind of tear them apart and make them into clothing or uh, accessories. And that was really fun for me to try and find those those institutions. And then there were even some, especially in Jacks where we live, there were some homeless shelters that were actually like men's clothing was appreciated because there weren't a lot of like men who were donating their nice or nicer clothing t-shirts not that nice but in good condition stuff and so they loved me because I would just drop a bag of like a hundred one time worn extra large shirts that were in perfect condition um, so they always loved that so yeah I, you know funny enough we, we moved from Jacksonville to San Diego a couple months ago we sold everything that we had and we had two suitcases two duffel bags and a couple boxes so I now own only like 40 shirts and so I'm like a t-shirt minimalist, which is such the opposite of what I was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I'm actually one of those guys where it's like anytime I do an event, they're handing out free t-shirts. Like I just I take all. The, so I have drawers and drawers of like free yeah. t-shirts from stuff. I love t-shirts, but yeah, me too. So, so yeah. And so you you found something that you really enjoyed. And and that's really cool. Uh, just curious, you know, is there I don't know. Is there any like secret sauce to figuring out how to create a business out of the thing that you have so much fun doing because I think that uh, you know some people out there would look at what they love doing and they wouldn't be able to figure out you know how you can make money off of it yeah I mean if you think about the the idea of I Reassured is really interesting because, you know, in the beginning I was really excited to try and film videos every day because that's what I did. I filmed a video every day, I took photos, I tweeted, I was on Facebook and I was, you know, on a live video show. But then as that kind of progressed, I wasn't passionate about those things. I wasn't really passionate about making videos. I wasn't, you know, I was more, I just wanted to tell the story. I just wanted to find the interesting nuggets about these companies and share those. And then all of those things that I did were kind of the vehicle to express those. And so that kind of became 
you know, what I call building a career dungeon around myself. You know, like you as an entrepreneur, you start your own business and you're like, oh, I'm going to have all this freedom and all this stuff. And now all of a sudden I was working 14 to 16 hour days. I was editing video for six hours and it was miserable. I mean, I just was like every day was like, what did I do to myself? You know, I, I can do this from anywhere, but I just am locked in into all these hours. And so now reflecting back upon that and looking at, okay, the type of businesses that I have now and the things that I do now is more along the lines of, I really want to follow a kind of a hint of passion or a hint of purpose, something really small. It doesn't have to be the thing that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this thing. And then I use the Mark Cuban quote, which is follow your effort, not your passion. Like where will you put your effort every single day? Like what do you want to put work into? And for me right now in, in the kind of the world I'm in right now is writing. I love writing. You know, over the past two years, I've written almost a million words in, in the past two years. And I was never a writer before that. I never read before that. I didn't have any experience. I don't even have a journalism background of any kind whatsoever. But I just found that like that's a really fun way for me to express my thoughts and to tell stories nowadays. And so just if anybody is thinking about, you know, I want to try XYZ thing, make sure that you want to put your effort toward it. Make sure that it's not just something that you're passionate about that kind of lights a fire into you. That is important, but a lot of times it won't lead to a good business. It'll lead to something that then you're going to hate that passion because you're going to have to wake up to it every day and you're going to, going to kind of be a slave to it, which is not what you want. You want to find something you're willing to put effort into. So there's, I think there's a really interesting mix. I wish I had a like a, all right, you need 10% passion, you need 60% effort, and you need 30% friendship you know i don't know what the last one would be but uh you just kind of have to find it yourself yeah no very true and i think that uh there's also a mistake that sometimes people make where they look at somebody like you know let's just say i i found you i saw what you were doing with the shirts and it's like oh well i could be passionate about doing something like that like maybe i'll just go wear companies hats for a year but it's like well but you're not really passionate about it. You're kind of following the money because you saw where someone else was able to make it successful. So it, it sounds like one of the bigger tricks is really figuring out what fits you and, and what's unique to you as opposed to like, oh, well, somebody else made money doing this, so I could probably do it too. You nailed it on the head, my friend. And I, I wish that I could have known that you know, years ago, but I wouldn't change anything. You know, I, a lot of people ask me, well, what would you change? Do you have any regrets? And there are things that I certainly did wrong. We all make mistakes. And I think when you can finally come to terms with the fact that those mistakes were okay because they led you to new things, that's important. But you you are so correct in that you need to establish, and I'm saying you as all of us, the collective you, uh, myself included, is what are your values? What are the things that you really enjoy? And, you know, for me, like I've realized over the years, it's not necessarily money. You know, money, like having a certain amount of money to me doesn't really matter. What does matter is having enough money that I can have the control and flexibility to travel or that I can, you know, help support some excuse me, help support some cause that pops up that a friend of mine's doing on Indiegogo or whatever and not have to worry about that stuff and not have to think about it. And of course, like have my bills paid, right? Like just the freedom to not have to worry about my bills. But I think you're you're so correct in that. And that's something that I've only realized, you know, as of the past year or so is what are my values? What am I defining as my core values? And and my girlfriend is really great at this too. She's she's very introspective and she thinks about this stuff a lot. And I think as guys, like it's just something that a lot of us don't think about a lot. We're we're more I think it goes back to like the caveman instincts. We're gonna take care of you. We're not gonna think about ourselves. We gotta kill the woolly mammoth, you know, we gotta make sure there's a fire and then that's it. And they're like sitting there the whole time, like, well, yeah, but how do we feel about the woolly mammoth? You know, how do we feel about the fire? Um, and so I'm really starting to to look into some of that stuff and then defining that for me and saying, what are my metrics of success? okay now how does my business define you know relate to those and then really those metrics become a filter and then everything that you do gets passed through that filter and if it doesn't make it through you know if you see something where you're like wearing hats for a living hey does this give me the freedom and flexibility uh, is this fun for me is this something where I'm giving people value and that's something that I care about mm, no probably not it's just chasing the money like you said that idea goes away. And so I think it's really good to establish those things and then be able to look at them like in a continuing basis. And they change. I think that's another thing too. Like it's okay if these things you're define them you define them once and you're like, oh, here's what I thought they were a year ago, but now I've evolved as a person. So now here's what they are. And that's a constant evolution and change that's perfectly okay. Yeah, and that that's a big reason why I called it the year of purpose and not the life of purpose is the I hate all these articles where it's like, you know, find your purpose in seven simple steps. Well it's like well, the problem is your purpose this year might not be the same as next year. I guarantee if I call you up 12 months from now and ask if you're passionate about the same thing, you're going to be like, well, you know, it kind of changed a little bit. It morphed. It's not exactly where it was. And that's totally okay. I think that we were kind of set up to... The problem is we were coded with this whole, like, you know, you grow up, you get a job, 
you you hold on to it for 40 years you retire like this is your life and so we're so stuck on like thinking that one path is like the way we have to go so even if we do get outside of that whole nine to five or whatever it is we think we have to do we still think that like we have to pick one thing and stick with it and one of the coolest things about entrepreneurship is you get to kind of close the doors on one thing and start a new project when you want to and that's something that you did ultimately is you started a bunch of things so what came after wearing a bunch of shirts for a couple of years yeah, uh, towards the end of I Wear Shirt, which which ended in 2013, um, I had an unfortunately fam unfortunate family situation, and my mom called me on Skype, which never happens. And so we, you know, I pop open the video, and I'm seeing her. She's crying, and I'm like, Oh my gosh! Like, what's going on? Like, why is my mom crying? And she's like, You know, your stepfather and I are going to get a divorce, and this was unfortunately my third father at the time, and. And I was like, oh, man, like that really sucks. You know, I didn't have a lot of attachment to him because I just didn't. You know, I grew up with a single mom. And, you know, and and she kind of she explained a little bit of the situation. And it wasn't it wasn't a good situation. It was really a bummer. And at that moment, the like the storyteller entertainer in me kind of came out and was like, oh, well, screw that guy. I'm going to sell my last name and like mush it in his face, like in the public eye. And it was just kind of a joke. And we laughed and I you know, got my mom to crack a smile in a moment of, of sadness. And and that was really it. Like this was April of 2012 when that happened. And then like four or five months later, I'm sitting at a Panera Bread uh, with my girlfriend and a guy who was working with me still with I Wear Your Shirt. And we were just down to us three people. Um, and I was like, what if I did this? What if I did this last name thing that I like threw out there as a jab? Because now I really don't want this last name Sadler anymore. It doesn't define me. It never has defined me. Um, but I don't know how to pick a last name. You know, I've had three. So none of them, I don't want to go back to any of them. I'm not just going to open the white pages and like thumb my finger through and be like, boom, I'm a, oh, I'm a Smith. Okay, here we go. Uh, I want to define, you know, kind of my identity one step further. And so, uh, yeah, I launched a website called Buy My Last Name. The domain was shockingly available, if you can believe it. Um, no one had really done this before. And I started an auction at $0. I built up a small email list, kind of building some buzz about it. And it launched and it was up to $33,000 in the first 24 hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt, Z. Like I, I was just staring at this giant number on this screen and was like, really? Like, okay, this is the validation, right? This is the, I had a crazy idea. Who knew if it was going to work? Um, but it just was, it was crazy enough. And I think it was, it was timed well enough that I had been on social media for four years. I'd been building my personal brand for four years. I'd been in a bunch of press and media outlets for four years. I couldn't have done that idea five years ago. No one would have had any interest. There was no reason to buy it. So the auction ended up ending at 45500 bucks to headsets.com, as you mentioned in the beginning. So I was Jason Headsets, D-O-T-C-O-M, spelled oh out. Um, and, and it you know, it's really funny because... I expected there to be so much backlash because there was a lot of backlash to the I wear your shirt idea because, you know, who's this guy that wants to get paid to wear t-shirts for a living? And then that kind of wore off as people just saw that, like, hey, this worked, like it became a business. And by my last name, I think as people read the story, you know, there are people that hear about this on the surface and they're like, oh, what a sellout. This guy sold his last name. He'll sell anything. But then when you actually hear the story, you're like, mm, man, like if I was in his position, I'd, I'd probably do the same thing. Like, why not? Like, you don't have a last name that you care about. So... Uh, but yeah, the, the the last name thing went off really well the first year I was on the front page of USA Today. I announced it live on Fox and Friends, uh, just a ton of press and headsets.com, you know, had an additional $250,000 in revenue increased in the wow. first six months. So like, you know, they they loved it. Their CEO, Mike Faith, is such an awesome guy. I highly recommend that company. They're like the Zappos of headsets. If anybody needs headsets, like I just, I still tell people I have no reason to, you know, I've, I've spent all their money since then. Um <laughs> But like they're just such a great company, and so yeah, I did the last name thing, um, and then I did it a second time, and then I, that led me to my book, which uh, you mentioned earlier. Um, I set up a uh, another website. That's pretty much how I started all my business. I just buy a domain and I get going. Uh, but I I wanted to kind of continue my story of the sponsored things that I had done. So my T-shirt in the middle there, there was like a road trip and a bunch of other things, and then my last name. And so I was like, ah, you know, I want to write this book, but I don't, I don't want to get a publisher. I don't want someone to tell me what book I want to write. It's my story. I don't want someone to edit out like something of my life just because they think it won't sell on a bookshelf or something. So I said, let me try and do some, some type of crowdfunding with sponsorships. And so I basically offered up a spot at the bottom of every page that's 140 characters in length, just like a tweet. And I sold the pages starting at 600 bucks and then counted them down. Three dollars less each page. So by the end of the two hundred page book, the last page would be three bucks. And I just thought that, like, hey, most people don't read an entire book. I don't. Um, and and you know, I launched it in five months and five thousand emails later. And by five thousand emails, I mean. 
people emailed me and asked questions. I pitched it to people who were existing sponsors of I Wear Your Shirt before. I mean, there was just so much going back and forth in explanation. I mean, I was selling something so intangible. Like, talk about a very not not a great business model is when like I'm like Z, hey, uh, send me six hundred bucks, and you don't get anything for like eight months, and then you still don't even know what you're really going to get because you can't actually see it until it's done. Uh, that was a hard sales pitch. Going back and thinking about that, like it'd probably be you know make that somewhat. A little bit better for people, but it worked. I mean, I was able to raise seventy-five thousand bucks in five months. Basically, wrote myself a book advance that first-time authors would never get, um, and I had full control. And then wrote the book Creativity for Sale. And you know, since then, I, I like to say it has not gone on to be a bestseller. It has not hit any list. Uh, but I've moved over ten thousand copies on my own, and I get emails probably once a week, twice a week of people who said that like this book had an incredible impact on them. Um, and if you want to find the book, it's on Amazon Creativity for Sale. But yeah, it just it was a kind of a labor of love, but it was also another one of those things that like I didn't want to ask somebody for for permission. I just wanted to do this in the way I wanted to do it. Very cool. And I have to ask, what is the the author name that this book was published under? <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Uh, so the sec I wasn't gonna do a second by my last name. I wasn't gonna sell my last name a second time. It wasn't the plan. But when I started to think about writing a book, I was like, ugh, the front cover of a book is like great real estate for a brand. And I, you know, I don't really know what I want my last name to be. The headsets.com thing was only supposed to be for a year. I was like, ah, you know, maybe I'll sell the last name thing again. The, the shirt thing worked out doing it more than once. This could work out. And so I, I did another auction for Buy My Last Name. And the kind of the big call out was like, I'm writing this book. It's going to be on the front cover of the book. Uh, and so a surfing company called Surfer App, S U R F R. They're really cool. They're basically like Yelp for surfing, and and they're trying to build this surfing ecosystem. And Nick Manaki and Chris Callahan, the guys who are behind it, are super nice guys. Again, like I've spent all their money, but I still continue to sing their praises because they're a great company. Uh, but yeah, so it was Jason Surfer App was on the front cover of that book. Uh, that's my Amazon bio. I, I've I have two other books that I want to write in the next couple of years, and I'm trying to think like, well, I'm Jason Zook now. How is that going to relate to that book? They're probably just going to be completely disconnected. That's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. I love this episode so far, and I want to take a brief moment to talk about improving yourself each day. I know you are a huge fan of living life on your own terms, but if there's one thing I've learned in my journey, we need to constantly grow and look to others who have been in our shoes, which is why I've partnered up with Audible to give you one free download of your choice from over 180,000 books. Start your free 30-day trial by visiting yearofpurpose.com slash audible. Now back to the show. <laughs> Very cool. So you've really found a lot of creative ways to both, you know, have a lot of fun and create a business that allows you to do the things that you want to do. And obviously, it's not stopping anytime soon. You have something really cool coming up here that it sounds like you've been working on for a while. Um, and that's actually kind of how I found you. And I think isn't your website like Jason's up to something or Jason's? What's your website address? Yeah, so I have my normal site, which is Jason does stuff dot com, Jason which does just stuff was the easiest way to explain it. But then I have this for this project that you're referencing now is I, I basically was like, what's an interesting way that I could kind of just captivate someone's attention instead of just like Jason does stuff.com slash new project. Uh, so I bought Jason is up to something.com and basically just built like a little countdown timer with my face and, you know, just like a little call out of the date of this project that's launching. Um, and, in, and in, again, like this is something that I repeat for every project is to build email lists for projects because Social media is such a wonderful thing to connect with people, but it's a terrible thing for marketing anymore. Like you just don't have the reach. Whereas, you know, if you give me your email address, I can I can pound you with messages of value, and hopefully you'll be like, oh, this guy gives me so much value. Yes, I want to check out his stuff. Uh, and notice I said pound you with messages of value, not just pound you with messages, uh, because I, I truly believe that an inbox is a sacred place, and you know that's something that I I really care about. So, so yeah, you want to get into this crazy project. Yeah, I think we should. It's about time to, to uh, let it be known to the public because it's been secret for a while now. And uh, I think that uh, you've really got a very creative and unique mind and where things go. So I, uh, it, as soon as you told me what you were up to, I was like, this is pretty sweet. So I think it's time to let them know what you're doing. Nice, man. No, I appreciate that. So yeah, I, over the past two years, have really like put my head down and focused on creating things and and really like the product world the online product world of courses and I wrote my book and then I have two web apps uh, one's an online course building platform because I couldn't find one that I liked so I had one built on my own and then another one is this product called Bump Sale which is the pricing structure that I created with I Wear Your Shirt which is the $1, $2, $3 increasing structure as people buy um, so I have these eight products and 
what I've realized over the years is I love creating new products. I love making things. It's, it's fun. I solve problems for people. You know, they give me money for those problems that I solve and that feels awesome. But I don't love the constant cycle of like, okay, now I got to market. Now I got to do all these things. I, you know, I got to promote and, and ever like sales funnels and all this stuff. I just, I don't love it. And it feels kind of icky to me. And so it got me thinking, okay, what could I do based on some of the projects I've done before that would be kind of crazy but would also be really akin to me and that would give people value. And so what I'm doing, Z, is I am launching a website called buymyfuture.com where for a thousand bucks people can buy one-time access to everything I will ever create for the rest of my life. Plus you get the eight things that I've already created. And so Kind of the way that I'm I'm spinning this to people is the past eight products are worth about twenty five hundred bucks. The next six products that I'm kind of guaranteeing that you can see on buymyfuture.com, uh, two courses, two books, and two other web apps are worth about twenty five hundred bucks each. So it's about five thousand dollars in value for one thousand bucks. And the beautiful part to me is that if you invest a thousand bucks in me. I'm not going anywhere. Like this is the stuff that I love, and and I kind of create things for three subsets of people that that I like, and those are people who want to be more creative. Those are people who want to take action in their business and lives, and those are people who want to make money with the stuff that they do, and maybe in interesting ways, because that's kind of you know the bump sale thing or online courses. I think there's really interesting ways that you can make money, and so that's what I'm building around. And so for you know the next. 40 years, I don't plan on moving to an island in Tahiti and like kicking my feet up. Like that's just not me. Uh, when I go on vacation, I'm the type of guy that like two days in, I'm, I'm stir crazy. I'm bored. <laughs> I don't have, like I need something to do. And so this for me is my opportunity to say, okay, for two weeks, you know, September 22nd to October 6th, you can invest in my future. You can invest in me, spend a thousand bucks, you get a ton of stuff. And then there's also going to be some really cool stuff with a community that's involved. Um, there's going to be, I'm going to do quarterly calls with this community so that I can really dig in and see what they need. Um, and these people don't just get my next projects for free, they get them first. So everyone's going to get first access to anything I create. Um, and I think my future is bright, personally. I mean, I, I think I have a really good track record of things I've been able to do, but I also really want to invest in this community community going forward and I want to you know at some point it would be amazing to be able to talk to each individual person depending on how many people buy and go what specific problem can I solve for you okay that's your problem let me go build it and then come back and give it to you and be like okay thank you and then you know move on and just continue to do that um, so that's really what I want to do I want to get out of the cycle of having to sell every new product that I make and just do this once a year by my future for a thousand bucks which I think is super affordable for all this stuff um, yeah and that's what I'm doing man I'm selling my future that that's pretty nifty, and so it and that's selling at essentially eighty percent off, uh, you know what what this stuff is worth, which is a very very good sale, um, and so I'm actually very curious, you know, I wanna I wanna read your book, so I'm definitely gonna be checking that out. Um, what are some of the things that you know are involved in this feature? You said you have two more books that you're that you're thinking about here, and uh, do you know what you want to write about yet, or is that just kind of like I know I want to do this type of a book? Yeah, I think for two of the projects that I thought about for those next six for this Buy My Future kind of guarantee, um, one will be an online course where I want to, within that community, say, everybody kind of submit your biggest struggle right now. And then I want to be able to upvote, like have people upvote it. And there's some really cool products that you can use within Slack and not to get too technical, but there's just some really fun stuff that can be done within that community. So like that, that second course for me is just going to be like, boom, like this is just for you guys. Like I'm building this just based on what you said you needed. Um, the other course is actually going to be like a really intensive level up your business with a less crappy name. That's just the easiest way to describe it. Um, but I want to spend like six months building that course. I want to do the same thing we're doing here. I want to interview people who are successful and find out like what are the things, like what are the patterns that I can find and then share that with my community. Um, so for the books, the, one of them is a book that I think I want to write on reinvention and how I've seen myself be reinvented through uh, my personal life, but also through my business life. You know, I, I was doing another interview recently and we were talking about like health. And immediately when you think of health, you think of the food that you eat, the exercise you do. We don't think of our businesses. We don't think of like, do I have a healthy business? You know, and that doesn't mean profitable. That means do I get up every morning, Z, and go, I like what I do. I really enjoy this business. It's not stressing me out. I don't have clients that I want to stab. Okay, it's violent. But it, I think people can relate to that. And and I think that we need more health in our business. So, you know, for me, like there's there's some type of book on that, like reinvention business health. And the second book, you know, actually, as you asked me, I, I hadn't really thought 100% yet on what I wanted to do. But I think it might be interesting just to build stories based on people within this community, right? And kind of write a book for them about them that other people can relate to. 
and then just watch the journey, you know, kind of kind of see if over the next course of the year or two what that journey looks like and document it and see if that's interesting for other people to hear about as well. And and who knows? Again, like like the value things that we were talking about, you know, like you said, um, you know, a year, a lot changes. Those book ideas may be completely gone, but that's where my headspace is now. And that's what I'm I would be really excited to write about now. Very cool. And I'd be totally down to be a part of that because I I think I've got a pretty interesting story and stories because things are constantly changing all the time. And, you know, how many 25 year olds do you meet who left working for Apple? (laughs) You know, that's like one of those companies where it's like you just don't leave. Yeah. And and then found yourself, you know, working inside the White House and on set for House of Cards for Netflix. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing the thing I love about that, Zeph, that's really interesting to me is that's another person's like idea of success though, right? Like, oh, you worked for Apple, but like you were in it and you're like, this isn't my idea of success. You know, this is, this is not making me happy. This, and I think there's just too much out there in life that like you have to do the things that society tells you are important or that, you know, is deemed important by other people. And no, you need to do the things that are important to you and you need to find things that are important to you. And and I love, I love chatting with you before the show. I, I love the conversation we've had here and just the emails that we've exchanged. And I can, that pours through, you know, so thick for me on, on the things that you talk about. And I really hope that the people listening to this, you know, if you're sitting on the edge, and, and I mean the edge of like, I don't really like what I do, I want to do something else, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge leap. You know, you don't have to think about like in the classic action movie of like jumping from one rooftop to the other and like, I may not make it. Why not just jump from like one step up a like flight of stairs to the next one? Like take that leap, which is a side project, which is something you could do in your spare time, like a really small best version of whatever your idea is. Um, and I've written about this a lot. I mean, I think side projects are incredibly important. I also think it's important to quit side projects. I think it's important to make space for other things in life so that you can do more things. And I think that, you know, quitting allows for space. And a lot of people don't think about it that way. They think quitting is failure. And to me, it's not. I mean, I'll start working on a project and be like, mm, nope. And then I just shelve it. You know, it's just, it's not worth the, t- the time being spent. But I think if anybody's just right there and they're looking, kind of listening to us and thinking, what can I do with this? You know, how can I start my own thing? Start small. You know, just really start small, the smallest version that you can do of that. And I'm sure you've talked about this, you know, many times before, but it's just taking that risk. You know, you will see the benefits of it. It'll be hard for sure to make those decisions, but there's so much that comes out of that that's positive that you won't even, you'd never even be able to see if you don't take that chance. Yeah. And that really is the hardest part. So it, it's, you really don't know what the future brings, but it, you know, you're, you've got a pretty cool looking future right now and you're giving people the opportunity for buy my future. And uh, so I think, you know, maybe just some parting words on, you know, if you could uh, go back to that guy who was wearing t-shirts around town and any piece of advice for uh, how he could just be, just really enjoy the moment. And I mean, I'm sure he was enjoying the moment and enjoying life, you know, at that time. But I'm just saying, like, if you could go back and just give him any words of wisdom just over the past few years of what you've learned, what would that be? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I get chills thinking about that, man. And and I think that the reason why I do is because it would be a really hard conversation. I think that we're all thick headed in our youth. And that's youth of however you define it. You know, for me, that was my late 20s. Um, for people listening to this, you know, they may be younger, maybe older. Um, but I, I think I would have been too thick headed to take any of my own advice. You know, I, I, what I would say is I would go back and I would say, you know, dare to go bigger. Because there were a lot of times when I had opportunities to work with bigger companies and I was afraid because I still felt that like, oh, I'm a nobody from here. And that's a self-limiting thing. No one said that about me. Like, no one did. I was the one who was thinking that. So, like, take those limits off. Dare a bit bigger. Uh, I think the other thing is what we talked about earlier, which is, like, take a second and define your values. Like, sit down define your values. And that's a really hard exercise. And for me, what really helped me do that was uh, a book by Pam Slim called Body of Work. And if anybody is like, oh, I, I, this feels woo-woo to me, like I don't want to do this stuff, read her book. It is not woo-woo. Uh, it is a really interesting book. It really helped me start to like chip away at that stuff. Um, and the other thing that I would actually go back and tell myself where I am right now is start writing. Every day, just start start a daily writing practice because you, not that I wanted to become a writer at that time or even that I think about now like, oh, I'm a professional writer. Like, I don't even think about that. I just know that writing for me has led to a lot of opportunities and it sparks a lot of ideas. You know, I'll start writing about absolutely nothing. Like, I'll just be writing about outside, like the things that I see. Like, really, some mornings I do write about that and then it'll lead to, oh, man, 
like idea. You know, my brain connects some dots and then boom, creative idea happens. And it's only because you're stimulating it. You know, you're not reading the Facebook feed. You're not reading Twitter. You're not watching, you know, cat videos on YouTube. You're actually doing something where your brain is kind of crunching numbers. So yeah, those three things I think would be what I would go back and tell myself. Um, I might also kick myself a little bit, like a swift kick in the wallet and be like, hey man, put the credit cards down, like stop leveraging debt uh, to get, you know, forward because it's not going to work. Um, but you know, again, like these are hard lessons that you may not even be able to tell yourself. Uh, but yeah, that's probably what I would do. Very cool. Well, this has been definitely a unique conversation. I don't think that I've interviewed anyone yet who has been so creative in their in their business and and where their life has gone. So you know, thank you for for being someone who can really set that example and show people. Uh, you know, I always want to show them what's possible and what's out there. But I think that uh, you know, we don't often look outside of the box of, you know, where can we get really creative with this? You know, so many of us are creative and we're not really taking advantage of that. We think, oh, well, I'll just, you know, start a business and do this and I sell this service and this is how it is. And you've really found a way to sell services that uh, are, are different from what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And I think that that's such a, a great point to bring up too, just to kind of wind this down is you are creative. If you're listening to this, you're creative. Like no one has to tell you you don't have to win an award to be creative. You don't need the blue ribbon of participation to be creative. Like you just need to do the things and you need to try and you need to not be afraid to fail. And you know, another book that I would recommend to people is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. That book for me, like incredible framing in, you know, for me on like all my past failures is like, well, they're not really failures. They were steps in the way of success. They were steps in the way of overcoming certain obstacles. Um, so I think those things are really important. And, you know, I, I would just Anybody listening to this that thinks they're not creative, send me an email. I will happily reply back, yes, you are creative if you need that permission from somebody else because you are. Everybody listening to this, you are absolutely creative. And uh, it's been a blast talking to you, Z. Some really great questions, really great conversation. Uh, love your story as well and, and definitely appreciative of your time. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for being here. And everyone needs to check out. It's buymyfuture.com, right? And yes. it launches. What's the date that it's out? September 22nd through October 6th is your window to purchase my future, which is a very weird thing to say. Uh, but yes, buymyfuture.com. Very excited. Awesome. And what is the link for the website just to kind of track everything else that's going on with you and what you're doing? Yeah, jasondoesstuff.com, which you'll actually find on Buy My Future. So if your starting point is Buy My Future because that's the crazy thing, you'll be able to find me from there. I'm, I'm easy to, to Google and find anything you want to see that I'm working on. Very cool. Well, thanks for being here, man. And uh, good luck with Buy My Future. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Year of Purpose podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us a rating and review if you loved this episode. Now, are you ready to live life on your own terms? Head on over to www.yearofpurpose.com right now for the tools, resources, and the roadmap to living a life rescripted. And tune in next week for another episode of the Year of Purpose.